Support comes from BECU, a member-owned credit union putting people over profit, offering financial services and support to the community with access to local financial centers, over 30,000 ATMs, and online resources at BECU.org. Federally insured by NCUA. Hey, it's Paige Browning in for Patricia Murphy. It's Wednesday. This is Seattle Now. Washington is all about its outdoor space. We love the environment. And there's a new proposal that would take a step environmentalists have wanted for decades. It could impact everything from the food on your table to the energy powering your lights. Seattle Times reporter Linda Mapes will tell us more about that in a minute. But first, let's get you caught up. Washington Governor Jay Inslee now says all Washington state public schools can reopen, even before everyone's vaccinated. To do so, schools must meet a list of requirements, including proper ventilation and, yes, masks. And, Inslee says, about 60 school districts are now doing on-site COVID testing, and any district that wants to start testing can get help from the state. A grocery chain is closing two Seattle stores and says it's because of the city's new hazard pay law. Kroger will close the QFC stores on 15th and Capitol Hill and on 35th and Wedgwood. Large chains are required to pay workers an extra four bucks an hour for the remainder of the pandemic. PCC and Trader Joe's decided to expand the pay bump to nearly all their stores. Kroger says the hazard pay makes it near impossible for them to operate sustainably. And how about a phone alert for when you need to drop, cover, and hold on? Washington has been waiting for the Shake Alert earthquake warning app to come to cell phones, and the USGS now says it will go live in May. Oregon is getting it a couple months earlier in March. There's a giant environment and energy proposal in Congress that would touch a lot of states in the West, including Washington, and it's coming from a surprising place, a Republican from rural Idaho. Here to tell us about it is Linda Mapes, who's been following this proposal for months. She's the environment reporter at the Seattle Times. Hey, Linda, thanks for joining us. Hi, Paige. Thanks for having me on. Of course. So this proposal we're talking about comes from Idaho Congressman Mike Simpson, and it's all about breaching four dams on the Snake River in eastern Washington. This is a huge river that ultimately meets the Columbia. What got Simpson interested in these dams? He's um, a man who is just a salmon nut. He is taken (laughs) with the incredible journey of these fish, especially, by the way, these Snake River salmon that come all the way back to Idaho. These are the ultra marathoner salmon. They climb more than a mile in elevation in their journey back from the Pacific to the feet of the Sawtooth Mountains. They travel hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles all by fin. It It's remarkable to him. It's remarkable to most of us in the region. A couple of years ago, in a very sort of almost shocking speech, told a room full Mm. of people that he was not going to leave office or or at least not leave this world without having tried to rescue these fish from what he is sure is certain extinction unless these four dams come out. I went last year with some of my staff up to Marsh Creek to watch a salmon come back and create its red, lay its eggs, and die. And I, I, I say salmon, not salmons. We saw one. One. And you got to ask yourself, after spending $16 billion on salmon recovery over the last however many years, is it working? He doesn't promise that dam removal will recover them, but he's very sure um, that they won't make it if these dams stay in place. So it's a it's a plea of passion from the heart, which, you know, maybe maybe all of us are a little refreshed by that. Well, yeah. And this is this this passion plea from the heart about saving this precious species is coming from a Republican. Is it significant that a Republican is championing this versus, say, uh, a Democrat from Western Washington? I think it's crucial. This is a Nixon China kind of moment. Uh, Mm. And for those of you who are too young to know what I'm talking about, it was um, (laughs) former Republican President uh, Richard Nixon 
who opened up relations with communist China. And it was said at the time uh, that only he could have done that because his his credentials as a rock-ribbed conservative were beyond doubt. Well, similarly here, we have a Republican from a rural district in Idaho um, speaking in what is actually a Western tradition of an outdoors person. In fact, you know, what he's doing here is not a break from tradition, but very much a resumption of a, mm. of a grand tradition in the West of of really looking beyond party and looking beyond politics on behalf of the great outdoors, on behalf of the nature, the wild nature that is the signature of this place. I want to dig in on this proposal. This is a huge proposal that Congressman Simpson is bringing forward. Let's start with the salmon. What impact would this have on them? Well, the hope is that by taking out four dams on the Lower Snake River, you would cut in half the number of dams that these fish headed to the Snake River Basin need to negotiate today. And these are big dams. They're 100 feet high. And the thinking is that that's just four dams too far, that they can make it through four, but they can't make it through eight. Mm. Dams have many effects on salmon, both adults and juveniles. For the adults, what happens to them is they wind up being greatly slowed in their migratory route coming home. And the other thing that's happening is because these, what was once a free-flowing, fast, cold river is now have been slowed to stair-stepped reservoirs. And these warm in the summer. And the cumulative effects of global warming in terms of the water temperature of these reservoirs have a cold water animal confronting in some of these uh, reservoirs, like the John Day, temperatures in the 70s for weeks at a time. And sometimes the water is so hot, as in 2015, that some of these fish never even made it out of the lower Columbia. I mean, they just croaked, it was so hot. And then for the little fish, they're confronting these 100-foot high structures, and we have spent hundreds of millions of dollars to improve passage for the juveniles through these systems, and passage is better. But you're still losing about 5% uh, at every single dam of the run. We'll do the math. You know, you're you're talking almost half by the time they get to the ocean. You know, we've had some good years relatively in the Columbia as recently as within the last 10 years. We've had some million fish runs, but... You know, the overall trend is down and down and down. And even a really good year today of a million fish used to be 10 million, 16 million. So this is a system that's in decline. This proposal from Congressman Simpson is more than just about salmon. He's talked about this proposal being a new vision for the Northwest, a new vision. What does he mean by that? It's what's exciting about it. It is more than salmon. I mean, in a way, the salmon are the reason uh, this is coming up. But there are other things that the region really needs to do anyway in, to be in a better position for the future. And here I'm talking about power. I mean, the Northwest mm. is home to uh, the, one of the world's greatest hydropower generating uh, machines anywhere. And it, it all depends in the grid, which is a it's a system that transmits this electrical power across the seven state region. And it's, um, it's really a marvel. It's incredible that it still works as well as it does. But it needs to be modernized, it needs to be more efficient. And, and furthermore, there's a need for even more alternative sources of energy to be uh, brought onto this grid. And And that's, again, where the Simpson proposal comes in. He wants to pour all kinds of money into energy research and money for infrastructure to modernize the grid, make it efficient, and, by the way, replace the power that would uh, be unplugged if you were to undo these four dams. Okay, this is interesting because I know an argument I typically hear for keeping the dams in place is These dams provide energy for thousands and thousands of people in the state, and cheaply, we can't just breach them and take them away. But he's saying, well, wait a second, this isn't going to last forever. We can have a way better system. It's true. I mean, when these dams were built, which was a lot more recently than people might think, 60s and 70s, uh, Hmm. we, we didn't have anything like the alternatives we have today in terms of the massive amount of solar power that's come onto the grid from California. As a matter of fact, the incredible amount of wind power that's come on in Washington and Oregon. So, and one of the things that Simpson would like to see funded in this proposal is development of even more options from battery storage to pumped hydro, maybe wow. even small scale nuclear. So he's really thinking big wow. here. He's asking, challenging the region to say, don't just look at what's there today. Think about what you want in 10, 20, 40, 50 years into the future. This is a chance 
for a kind of new Northwest Power Act. It hasn't been touched in 40 years. This doesn't touch the regulatory structure of the Power Act, but it would invite the region to rethink an energy system for the future. Hmm. And and this proposal would cost a lot of money, $34 billion, I think, is the estimate right now, $34 billion. Where would all that money come from? Right. I mean, the thing that Congressman Simpson said, he said, look, you could never do this on its own. There's no way I could put out a proposal like this just for the Northwest. The vision here is to make this a chapter, a piece of a very much larger national stimulus bill for energy, clean jobs, and the environment. And, you know, that is anticipated from the Biden administration later this year. It's way too early to say where this goes. That's what I was going to ask. Do you think this thing has a shot? Well, I think it has a shot if there really is a trillion, two trillion dollar stimulus package. If that really happens, Simpson means this. He, he, this is not just vanity. This is not just making a show. If there is a vehicle he'll he'll pursue it and it'll be really interesting to watch this we really haven't seen anything like this um in the northwest in a very very long time not at this scale not this profound not as bipartisan as it would have to be i mean this is tr- this truly would be uh, a new vision for a very large region it's big This could be basically a solution to one of the longest running environmental feuds in the Western United States. So um, we'll definitely be watching what's going to happen next. I'm speaking with Linda Mapes, the environment reporter at the Seattle Times. Linda, thanks so much for your time. You bet. It's a pleasure. Seattle Now is produced by Claire McGrain, Caroline Chamberlain Gomez, and Jason Pagano. Matt Jorgensen does our music. I'm Paige Browning. See you tomorrow.